So we've got the power factor correction calculations. What are some of the main points you can point out, Paul? Um, are they so? Do you think that you're actually done with the calculations, or? Yes. Okay. Um, can you summarize some of the highlights? When we say less efficient, how how much less efficient? Um, the power to loss is approximately twice um, what the uh, previous MOSFET had. There's about 100 watts of loss as opposed to about 60 for the previous set. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see. Um, as far as 100 watts in efficiency, what does that translate to the overall power supply? Um, I expect the overall power supply to be close to 90% efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the industry standard figure? Um, in that range. Mm -hmm. So if we have... Um, Say we're using 10 kilowatts in a um, in a welder. You will have one kilowatt of power that will be handled by waste power that will be handled by fans. Yes. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. Um, and the uh, airflow. I calculate required airflow for the um, device. And um, it looks like about 200 cubic feet per minute, which is not too bad. That's a small muffin fan. Small muffin fan, 200 cubic feet per minute? Yeah. Okay. Um, there'll, there'll be several fans needed side by side. Um, the, phase mo the transformer in the, the inductor in the power factor corrector will need its own fan, and the, power, the phase modulator will also need a fan. Mm -hmm. Don Mosfet. Now, does this... Uh, bring up the discussion on uh, using IGBTs again, or no? This is well acceptable. Um, I expect that a lot of IGBTs would be greater. Mm -hmm. um, IGBTs have a larger voltage drop across them, around two and a half to three volts. Mm -hmm. And they have a... I'd have to um, switch at a lower frequency, about half or less which would mean a much bigger transformer. Uh-huh. Yeah. MOSFETs allow for a much smaller... Yeah. Wait, MOSFETs are... You can switch these uh, at a higher frequency? Yes, mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. I'm switching at 100 kilohertz for these uh, two parts. Okay. The higher the the frequency, though, the is that um, refer to more challenge in terms of um, everything else? Though the higher the frequency, the more difficult it is to control, or no? Yes, it is. Um, a hundred kilohertz is so 
sort of a uh, a balance between um, losses, switching losses, and transformer size. Um, lower than 100 kilohertz and the size of the transformer starts to get out of hand. Higher than 100 kilohertz, switching losses start to be more significant quite rapidly. Yeah, yeah. I have a graph of, uh, on the uh, power factor corrector, I have a graph of the power to last versus frequency that I think explains it quite clearly how the power to last. It's on an exponential curve. Yeah. Um, what page is that on, do you? I'm not sure that the page, um, I don't have page numbers, but I would say it's around page 10. That's a guess. Oh, yeah, P power loss, FET, power loss versus frequency yeah. for 10 to the 5th, which is 100 kilohertz. You got about 100 watts, uh huh, under 100 watts right there. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. And 200 kilohertz, your losses are around 170 or so. Aha. Uh -huh. Below 100 kilohertz, I don't, I'm not plotting it here, but the size of the transformer is starting to get out of hand. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you don't have the transformer size plotted? Mm -hmm. Mainly That's because transformers come in specific sizes. I go in the under core selection, which is a couple of pages on. I have uh, equations for uh, most of the available transformer sizes. Uh, under where? A couple of pages further on. Mm -hmm. Under core last, core selection. There's fat losses, free convection method, core selection, and that's and core a loss uh, table. list of pretty well all the available cores. And I'm using an E100, which is pretty well the largest ferrite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, the different various types of cores. Um, and then the core loss table is what you're talking about? I calculate the core losses um, further on. Uh, corresponding to a, there's a graph? No. Oh, when you calculate it, uh, it's just a result in a, in line somewhere as opposed to a graph? I calculate the loss. Um, about uh, six or eight pictures on. Six to eight pages from where? From the beginning of the curve selection. Um, I go through and calculate the last for that card across a range of different ferrite materials. A, uh, a line that says loss 3C81, 
Is there a way that you can see? In um, I'm using Document Viewer. Uh, it has the page up in the upper left corner. Uh, can you point me to the page? Um, I'm not using a, um, a viewer. I'm looking at the original document, which doesn't have pages. Mm -hmm. Can you look at the document that you sent me and open it up in like Document Viewer? Thus, what's the case for the IGBTs at higher power levels, or? IGBTs are better for higher power. Um, 10 kilowatts is about the limit for MOSFETs at the moment. So it's a nice, a nice fit for the largest, newest MOSFETs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, page twenty two or twenty three. Total transformer loss. Delta T two hundred LMF LFM estimate um, loss is one hundred seventy one of what watts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I looked through a bunch of different ferrites there, and I'm using three C ninety four material, and the losses are ninety three watts. You went through all the different uh, materials, like the different. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From different manufacturers. What about the one that's like lower, lost 3C96? It's even lower. Um, there is one K material, mm -hmm. but it's not available in an E100 size. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And 3C96, which is also lower loss, is not available in the E100 either. Um, so that's a chunk of material that is, um, it's, an, it's a metal, metal, alloyed metal of some sort? And no, it's, uh, it's rust, basically. It's iron, iron oxide, ferrite. Ferrite is iron oxide? Ferrite is iron oxide, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has some other stuff in it. It has some nickel in it. And some manganese. Uh, so this is basically um, availability off the shelf for winding these transformers? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how difficult is it to make these cores? What do, you, what do they do? They just press them like a little brick? Um, yeah, they're shaped like the letter E. Mm -hmm. Other 
other materials, th this is ferrite, iron ferrite, um, other materials that are a possibility are iron powder mm -hmm. or neck glass. Mm -hmm. But none of those materials work well at 100 kilohertz. Neck glass is a very interesting material. It's lower loss directly, but it's electrically conductive. So you have hysteresis losses in the uh, material. If it wasn't for that, it would almost be the perfect material. So 70 watts is actually, I think, or 90 watts is actually quite a low loss for a transformer that's carrying 10 kilowatts. Yeah. Right. And the losses, um, so that's the transformer, so that's the, at the switching frequency, it's going to be 90 watts, yes. and, and how many of them? Yeah. One? At or 100 kilohertz. How many of them? watts. Yeah. How many of those transformer cores do we need? Two of them, okay. Okay. Uh, so we're counting like 180 watts loss total there, or so, or 190? Oh, no, we only have, there's only um, one card, one, one pair of cards. This is, that loss is for a pair of cards. Okay. Okay. Uh, when it comes to other losses, where else are the losses coming from in the system? So this is the, trans the transformer for the power factor corrector. Um, the main losses are in the uh, FET and the transformer. On the uh, phase modulator, mm -hmm. there's a similar core. Mm -hmm. And it, so the losses for the uh, power factor corrector are about 100 watts in the FETs and about 100 watts in the transformer for a total of 200 watts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the phase modulator, there's losses in the FETs and losses in the transformer and losses in the inductor and losses in the rectifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Phase modular in a document on page five. Let's see. Yeah. Power fat loss versus frequency, so a hundred so it's gonna be about what sixty? Sixty five or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go through some of the other uh, results that you've calculated? So the so you t uh, do things like the losses in the transformers, um, losses in the in the fat.
to calculate the efficiency of the transformer or its output characteristics? Page 17 on the skin depth, yeah. And the skin depth is 0.146 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And the uh, maximum diameter of a wire is about twice that. Uh, so you're not really the, using the wire. The rest of the wire the rest of the body of the wire is not used. So mm -hmm. what that means is each strand of the wire has to be that size. Uh -huh. um, that size wire is 29 gauge. And the wire has to be 1,000 118 strands of wire. Each of those strands of wire needs to be insulated from its neighbors. Mm. And they need to be wound in such a way that they're all evenly exposed to the magnetic field. So the wire is sort of woven. How do you weave it? I mean, you just coil it so it's a regular turn, of, you know, basically layer upon layer, no? No. It's um, twisted and woven. You can't, if you just layer out the inner wires as exposed to the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So the wound was a technique where every single strand over the length of the wire has a uniform exposure to the magnetic field. For the thousands of turns, like you said, 1,900? Yeah. How do you do that? Um, you use a machine. There are companies who specialize in it. Um, New England wire uh, NWS Industries and Cooper Industries are three companies that uh, do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, does that make them expensive, or this is standard industry standard stuff? Um, it's a bit bigger than your average piece of this wire, but it's all well within their capabilities. But it'll have to be a custom order. They only stock up to about 18 gauge. This wire 
is the zero gauge. Wait, hold on a second. Zero gauge, zero is fat. I beg your pardon? Zero is fat, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Litz wire. I'm. Uh, where's the fat wire? I, I'm, I'm not understanding the word there. Are you saying flat? Fat. The zero gauge. Okay, this was point. This wire is going to be like 0.14 millimeters. So, gauge mm -hmm. 29. Where's the zero gauge? The whole bundle of wires equates to a zero gauge. Mm -hmm. It's effectively about zero gauge. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so welding cables are typically four gauge. Yeah. Yeah, this is very fat. Um, four aught like zero 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 is like house wire power from the street. Um, power from the street is usually bigger than that. Uh, sorry, smaller than that. Yeah, and then the yeah, then the, after the transformer on the on the house, or like if you're going up, we've got four aught. Aluminum cable uh -huh. to our house here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so litz wire is basically that's multiple strands inside a strand. M multiple strands, and each strand's insulated from its neighbors, unlike regular wire. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, this is in the power factor correction? This is in the phase modulator. Although the wire in the power factor corrector is the same. In the inductor of the power factor corrector, it's the same stranding. Strands, uh, strand SP. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now all these calculations, like this kind of stuff here that you have to calculate is based on frequency, uh, yes. based on voltage, like the power levels and all that. This kind of stuff doesn't exist like turnkey, you can't get these numbers out from somewhere? or No. There's too many different factors here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also seems like some of this should be more available or like more transparent like as if there were various calculators or if this were open source I mean then 
there will be this kind of software and various calculators available to make this happen. Um, is there is there anything open source that's available to calculate these wires or? No. So it's somewhat of a gap with within the proprietary yeah, world. No, yeah. Normally, you hire a consulting company that specializes in power electronics. Yeah. And they calculate it using something like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Math cadres used quite heavily in the um, electronics area. Um. Do those people that make the welder power supplies, um, they typically do go that route, or do they develop their own software? Or they usually hire a consulting company. Yeah. Would you see something? What do you see the future of this design being like? Is there? So you're working on a piece of software that will uh, do some of these calculations, but as far as overall to help the world of open source power electronics, what would be the number one need out there? Well, it's a highly specialized area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's so. Uh... Every large city usually has a uh, consulting company on power electronics. Mm -hmm. Toronto has one or two. Uh huh. Right. So let's see, what are some of the other things in the documents and the calculations you sent that you want to point out? Within a, are you talking about the transformers? Within transformers? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's how this program actually started, came to be because I had no good way of calculating the magnetic field, so I sat down to calculate it. Um, if you look at the uh, phase modulator, yeah. Yep. Um, approximate primary turns. Yep. And there's a delta B there. Mm hmm. At 0 0.088 Tesla. Yep. That's the uh, most critical number in the entire set of calculations. That's the magnetic field in the uh, ferrite. And around that, once you've calculated that, everything else falls out that turns on the transformer primary to secondary ratio, the losses in the cord. And this is for alter, let's see, um, like the tau, that's like the frequency. Mm -hmm. 
and like it refers to the frequency. And we're talking about what kind of frequencies here? 100 kilohertz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that Delta B is the swing of the magnetic field with each cycle. Yeah. Um, if you look down to the next page, I calculate the tunes on the primary and secondary. Primary turns. And then I recalculate delta B now that I have a uh, turn to ratio set. And that's the actual operating magnetic field that the transformer has at 0.071. Secondary turns 3, primary turns 37. Uh, so from the magnetic field in the core, you go to what? Sorry, what's the second okay. delta B? The first delta B, the 088, ends up with a 2.46 turns on the secondary. And you can't have a partial turn. Yeah. You have to round that up. So that mm. decreases the uh, magnetic field slightly. Yeah. Okay. Switching losses of the fats are determined, you said, capacitance? Yeah, fats have two modes of losses. One is a conduction loss for how bad they are at carrying the current. And the other is switching loss. It takes energy to turn them off and on, and while they're turning off and on, they have losses. They can get quite high. And in this case, they overwhelm the conduction losses. On page um, five of the uh, phase modulator on the graph, I have the bottom line below the uh, curve. I have the dashed line. Mm -hmm. EFR, yep. EFR, those are the conduction losses in the FET. Ah, yes, okay. Yep, conduction and, losses. And the curve is the total loss. Yep. Yep, so you're so going... You can see how, how dramatic the switching losses are. Certainly at higher frequencies. You're going for the essentially two two of the capacitive loss, sorry, two of the the conductive loss as your figure, 
where you want to stop? Yes. Is that uh, industry standard kind of a selection? Or? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Does that come out from the, like the, that's a standard it's based the, on the size of the capacitors you're going to need? It's the frequency that it's switching at that controls those losses. On a factor of two, EFR is essentially why is two the desirable kind of loss? Um, two times that. If you go to a lower frequency, I would have to go away from using a ferret card to an iron card, and the losses in an iron card are much higher. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to have a switching frequency around 20 kilohertz. Yeah. This is the lowest frequency that the largest commonly available ferret car works at. Yeah. So I started off this design actually at 200 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. But the um, fairly core losses were too high. So I moved to a larger ferrite and lowered the frequency until the ferrite losses were okay. At the expense of the size of the ferrite core? Uh, at the expense of the, was the trade-off the size of the ferrite core? Yes. So you're trading off dynamic switching losses with ferrite core size. Mm -hmm. uh, is the size of the ferrite core, is that referred to cost? No, it's what's available off the shelf. Making a custom ferrite core is a quite extensive proposition. Hmm. Is that uh, is the thing there about the ferrite cores? You you press hot press and then you cool rapidly, or is that? No, it doesn't. Have, it has to be cooled along a profile. to get the right kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. Is this sci is, are there developments in this field like uh, about cores for transformers? Is that something that's in active development? Neck glass is in active development. Mm -hmm. Neck glass is a uh, nickel iron steel. That's um It's um, cooled very rapidly, and it's thin, thin crystals. You drip molten nickel iron onto a rotating drum and peel it off as a thin, thin layer, and then the core is bound out of that crunched um, crystalline material. And it's a very good material, but alas, it's conductive, something ferrite is not. So you have any current losses in it. Mm -hmm. It's a much better magnetic material, but the conduction losses are high. I see. Conduction, meaning the magnetic field is turning into heat. Yeah. So the the ideal characteristics are non-conductive, and what else? 
and it's very good magnetic material. Mm-hmm. You want it to have what's called a uh, very thin hysteresis loss. As the magnetic field swings back and forth, you want it to have minimum area under the curve. Yeah. New ferrites are being developed. Uh, new being what, like processed, like still ferrite, iron oxide, but also some additives or different processing? Different, different processing and different materials. Mm hmm. But you have to think on a time scale of years, or tens of years, decades, I guess would be better. In the last decade, there have been a couple of new ferrites. The 3C94 material is only about 10 years old. What kind of performance improvement did that prov provide? Both factors, too. In terms of the losses of the transformer? Yeah. At the same frequency. Right. Um, so this is... What are the limits to this? Is the is there going to be a perfect magnetic material that's with zero hysteresis? It'll always be trade-off. That's why I calculated it for the whole raft of materials, because mm -hmm. it's very frequency dependent. There might, so there might be dedicated ones for particular frequencies? Uh, is that what you're using? Are these ones for that specific frequency, or that they're more generalized? Uh, 3C94 material is good for 100 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, previous material that I would have used would have been 3C85, and it's got a bit close to losses. Yeah, yeah. Now, what kind of companies are doing this? Is this like industrial or is this universities? Um, industrial. There's a company in um, New York State called Ferox Tube. Yeah. They do a fair bit of active development. Another company is Magnetics Inc. Yeah. Um, and the challenge to these developments, you said it's on a decade time scale. Is uh, what are the kind of challenges? I mean, is that because not a lot of people are working on it, or what's? Yeah. Mhm. Mm Are you going to say something? No. Okay. Um, yeah. Hmm. Philip used to own Ferrox too. Yeah. And they just about wrecked the company. And they didn't do any development work while they were owned by Phillips. And Phillips finally realized that and got rid of them. So they're back to being an independent company again and making more progress. Mm -hmm. How important are developments in this? Is this like pretty... Um critical to human prosperity in the future, or is it, um, what are the ramifications of, of real good improvements in this? It Anything? means little things, like the power cube that runs on your laptop gets smaller when the ferrites get better. 
Mm -hmm. So just energy improvements. Like right now, those cubes are how how efficient? Like eighty five or ninety or? So it was around for 10 years or so? Fats have improved a lot in 10 years. Mm -hmm. The ferrets are. More than the ferrets have improved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've been um, pretty much doing this, um, going through all the calculations, and how much more calculation is left for the design? I'm pretty well done. There's one piece left, but I'll wait until um, I have a schematic. Like power output feedback, like or is that yeah. the when you set it for say a hundred amps, mm -hmm. it needs to control its um, phase modulator to a hundred amps and uh, adjust the uh, phasing to correspond to a hundred amps. And to error correct when it's lower or higher. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done that feedback system yet. And I'll wait until I've done the schematic before I do that. Mm -hmm. And that's with the current sense part? And that, uh, so do the schematic because there will be some things that come out of the schematic, like you choose some, what, some components that will determine that, or, like, yeah. topography, or? Yeah. I haven't picked out an appropriate current feedback technique yet. It'll probably be an LEM. Uh, a what? L it yet. LEM? Yeah. Um, LEM is a company that makes current sensors. They're Hall Effect devices. Mm-hmm. Close to Hall Effect, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. They sense the magnetic field around a conductor and put it out of voltage according to the current flowing in the conductor. Yeah. And I haven't picked out the model. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then I need to um, do a uh, a plot on the um, power factor corrector. I've done the feedback system. And if you look at page. Seven 
On a phase modulator? Yes. On the, uh, no, on the um, power factor corrector. Okay. Page 7. It says voltage loop gain. Yes. Just above it is the equation for the feedback system. And the plot is the voltage gain versus frequency. And on the next page, page 8, is the phase. Okay. And both of those turn out to be okay. It also has, on page five, there's another pair of plots. The current loop gain and phase angle. Current loop and phase angle. Um, gain. As a function of the gain? Yeah, as a function of the frequency. And the important item there is that when the gain falls to zero, let the phase angle be nowhere near 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And it turns out to be about 50 degrees. About 50 degrees at... At 10 hertz. Mm-hmm. Does the book, Switch Mode Power Supply Handbook, cover uh, like feedback like this? Yes. Uh, do you know where, like what chapter here we're talking about? I have uh, no idea. That would be... Post these. Um, I'm keeping track on the Power Electronic Construction Set wiki page. I'm putting up all these files and our videos as we go along, so people can study the history. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good, really good that you have all the calculations, so someone can actually take a look at that and make sense of the whole thing if they're in the know. <laughs> Next phase is then to, to go through the circuit on the... I, I'm not uh, hearing you properly at the moment. Sorry, so is the next phase to go through the actual circuit? Yes. So after a bunch of calculations, you can design both the PFC as well as the modulator? Yes. I'll revisit that. And... Um, Yeah. 
Yeah. And to draw up an initial, like, um, f for example, for the power factor correction, each of the parts, each of the two modules, is that like a week, week per each or something, or? Oh, it'll be longer than that. I would say the next phase will be a month or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. So, as far as scheduling goes, next week I'm actually traveling on on Wednesday. We're giving a talk at the Oregon College of Arts and Crafts on this. Oh, good. Um, so I'm not, not going to be around next week. The week after that, we actually have the aquaponics workshop. That's going to be a a pretty busy week. Uh, things are coming together really well. It looks like on a black soldier fly, we're pretty good. Uh, the various collaborations, like mushrooms and the whole design, it's coming together pretty well. But Thank we're you. yeah, we're quite busy preparing for that. Um, let's see, maybe um, yeah, the next two weeks are going to be pretty hectic before the workshop happens. Can we talk again, maybe in three weeks? Would that work for sure. you? Okay. Okay, let's let's do that. So, um, essentially, on a calendar, that would look like um, today's the twenty-eight, November four, November eleven is eleventh is our last day of the workshop. How about let's do, oh, maybe Tuesday, like the seventeenth. Okay. Um. Let's do Tuesday the 17th, 5 p.m. Okay. Okay. Let's go with that. Okay. Are there any other points you want to mention about the current state of all I the calculations? Okay. It's quite some epic work. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's really good. And overall, and um, and how this rolls out. So, so a few weeks, or like say four weeks or so on the on the design of the actual circuits. And from that point, um, what is the next phase after that? I mean, do you when you design that, then the next step is uh, prototyping some 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 of it, or so act an actual board fab, or or how does the process work? Yeah. Mhm. Mm um, mhm. Mm the physical shape of it. Yeah. Yep. And um, after that is done, then um, we can look at board fat. Mhm. Mm as far as the cabinets and the weight of the system, as, as far as the electronic components, capacitors, what's the weight expected to be for the 10 kilowatt system? It would be like... I would estimate 100 pounds. About 100 pounds, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's none of the other systems like wire feeder, this is just power electronics or... And the biggest way will be what? The transformers and capacitors? Yeah. And um, actually, I think the biggest way is going to be an aluminum heat sinks. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Aluminum heat sinks followed by what? The transformers? Capacitors and transformers. In that order? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Okay. You sent me an email. Yeah, I did. I did. So what are your thoughts on 
on the advisory advisory um, role. Well, I'm not sure I'd be of any help. <laughs> but you already are. I mean, you're helping on the pretty much. Um, it's an advisory role, but you're actually a design role. Um, I mean, advisory as in various uh, feedback on any power electronics questions. You don't think you would be able to help? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you could definitely help. I, I think what you've been doing is extremely helpful. I, that's That's what we mean by the advisory role, meaning that whether it's advice or actual work, anything that that puts the project forward, keeps us on the right track and direction. Yeah, assessing different options and developing some others. I see. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess okay then. Okay. Can you send me a, maybe a picture or or some some of your CV or like I like I mentioned in there or. Yeah, see, it see might what, take me a while. Yeah, yeah, see what you can pull together. and I mean, it's good to give credit to the people, I mean, so that also people know. And, um, yeah, people are aware of what's happening. Um, do you mind being a, a, on a public uh, site like no. that? Or? No, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think it should be good and definitely gives you credit. Um, how important is credit to you? I mean... <laughs> yeah, but you can <laughs> you can have glory anyway. <laughs> no, that's good. It's good for people to know um, who's involved and for transparency and potential other collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. That would be. We'd love to add you to to the list of constant contributors. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have been. A regular contributor for some time, so that's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Um, any other questions on that or on the nope. present situation? Okay, well, then, um, yeah, then let's look forward to talking again in uh, three weeks and then we can report on the results of the aquaponics, the exciting work there. We've got about okay. 32 people signed up right now, so it's a, it's filled. We did really well on on the admission, so there's lots of excitement around this, so we look forward to it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk then in, uh, in the three weeks. Okay. Okay, Paul. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.